in the history of humanity, things we don't understand, we tend to blame the patients and say that they're mad. Um, and as we understand more and more, uh, we th see people as less and less mad. Uh, and I've always believed the patients. So uh, we have uh, recently been looking at the genetics of irritable bowel syndrome. And we've come across some, uh, we know that irritable bowel syndrome does run in families. Um, uh, and we've identified some important uh, genes, six genes to be precise, that are clearly linked to developing IBS. And interestingly, although these genes are mostly about um, uh, cellular mechanisms, uh, which significance of which we don't fully understand, they do appear to involve nerves, um, which we know are very important in the gut and the brain. Um, and uh, there is an overlap in the genetic um, makeup of people with irritable bowel. They, they, they share features with people who have anxiety. And I think the message we get from this is that by doing uh, genetic analyses, we can identify key molecules and key processes that we might be able to pursue uh, and uh, to, to lead to new ideas of mechanisms and new therapies. And I particularly want to make sure people understand that um, the, uh, the brain uh, and the gut are very intimately related. Uh, they share a lot of tissue, a lot of nerves are also are present in the brain and the gut, and the neurotransmitters, particularly the one I'm interested in, serotonin, is very widely distributed in both the gut and the brain. Uh, and these shared genetic uh, tendencies may reflect changes in the gut, or they may reflect changes in the brain, but most likely they reflect both. Uh, either way, they are new targets we would never have imagined before, uh, and they give us an exciting opportunity for new research. The fact that there's a commonality in the genetic makeup between anxiety and IBS does not mean that anxiety causes IBS. What it tells us is that the neural processes, uh, which may be in the brain or may be in the gut, um, are shared.